I love, I so love the cave scene because I think it erases for a lot of us this, this thought that, I, I grew up in church and, and, and the thought was, if you draw near to God, so, so the connotation of that can sometimes be translated to, if you get your act together, yeah. God's gonna, he'll, he'll end up yeah. meeting you halfway. Yeah, yeah. But you do your half so God can do his. This totally takes that thought and it's like, wait, God is, is fighting for me in, in the cave. And if we can remember back in the beginning, he actually, even before all this transpired, he had made a way for me. He was, he was creating a path to the cave long before I ever got in the situation, so cool. which we could talk about in a moment. But I want to land in the cave just for a moment, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> and I want to talk about what, what did you sense there? What did you feel? What, what, there's so much imagery happening, but break down for me. What is it saying about a good father? Once again, I feel like we need to start with Bruce once yes. again. Mm -hmm. Like, he never left your side. Wow. Hmm. There was never a time when your stuff came between you and him. Hmm. He always had his arm around you. Wow. He was always pursuing you. And even though you're stuck in the cave now in chains, he's always been after you. Yeah. Wow. And one of the reasons I think he's done that is that he wants to, he wants to remind this broken person that he's actually a saint mm. who is sinning. He's not a sinner mm. striving to become a saint. Wow. He wants to tell him that, you know what, wow. um, Jesus took your shame. Wow. In Isaiah it says that Jesus, that's what Jesus died for. Yeah. Took our shame and one of the best things he ever did for us was to give us a brand new shame free identity. Mm. Wow. And that's why he calls us a saint. Uh, without whitewashing anything without pushing anything aside of the stuff that I'm doing and the consequences that mm. I'm doing. Mm. I think he's going there in part to tell him, guess what, this is who you are. Wow, mm. yeah. So amazing. You know, one of the things that stood out to me was also it's not just that there's this one guy in the cave, but the community of the cave. Yeah. yeah. That, that it's not just me that that's I'm, right. it's not just me that's dealing with this. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, to go Bible just for a moment, but it, it, it so is for me, First Corinthians, when Paul says, no temptation has overtaken yeah, you. But what right. is common, this is a common, the enemy wants me to believe I'm the only guy dealing with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a and common here's the cave, cave showing me, yeah. wait a second, Jim's here too? <laughs> Jim, hey, never Jim. Told, Jim never told me he was dealing with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what were some thoughts that you had about that? Yeah, I think that there's this idea of, with, if you take the motif, it's like you have to, there's the, the I'm in this when you're in the weeds and then there's like the 50,000 foot perspective. Mm. And I know in my own life, I vacillate between those two. You know what I'm saying? The like what I'm going through versus what the big picture is. Mm. And what the big picture is, is something that you, which is what you talked about, which was like, my suffering is not out, it's, it's not out of control, mm. right? In the sense of this like, the chaos or this concept of like, good guys versus bad guys in this this powerful like fighting and then maybe the good the bad is going to overtake but the you know it's like no what that showed to me is that god in in no way shape or form was shook by mm. any of this this is not out of my authority wow right and so so that even in the middle of suffering can be very comforting you yes. know what i'm saying that it's not out of my sovereign love and my sovereign control and my pursuit for you. I'm, I have calculated for this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's, that's very comforting when you're looking at it up here, mm. right? But when you're in the cave, you know what I'm saying, getting your teeth kicked in, right? There's, again, in my life, this, this dual sort of like, I deserve this, mm. you know what I'm saying? This is my penance. But God, this sucks, and I want out, but maybe I shouldn't, and I can't ask for God because mm. I, I did, but I don't. I'm in stuck, and the, so then there's this like even just you know the the uh, the 
the chains, but then the chains of sin, but then there's another chain that I think that that's a metaphor for, a bigger picture of the, the chain I locked myself in, mm. this vicious cycle of like, I know this is wrong, I need to ask for help, I can't ask for help because I know this is wrong, so mm. I need to ask for help. So I'm in this like circle, and, in the, and, and at the end of it, you know, even with me just being like, I just need some help, you know wow. what I'm saying? I'm thinking that's the first time God is hearing me say this. Wow. And now he's starting, right? Right. But right. no, 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 no. I've been pursuing you the whole time, mm. you know, and that is where, to me, the 50,000 foot and the personal, like, in the weeds yeah. moment meets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think of, for me to get biblical, I think mm. of uh, Daniel, mm. right, in um, chapter 9, 10, 9, 10. Maybe not that biblical, yeah, yeah. right? Where he's where he's he's praying, but he's repenting not only for himself but for the nation. Like wow. so, he's like owning all of it. Wow. So like, I even think of that. Like when I'm like, man, I'm in this, but I'm in this for like every dude who's suffering yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. Like, yo, we all need yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so I'm gonna bring all of us to the table. And then how the Bible was like, uh, you know, I, how Daniel said he was praying for fasting for 21 days, mm. right? But the scripture says, no, I, I left day one. Like, I was, mm. day one, I was on my way. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, that, like, no, nah, I've been pursuing you the whole time. Right, right, this right. This is not out of my control. Yeah. Is something that can be comforting in the, in the middle of suffering. Absolutely. Yeah. It also, by the way, when you went Daniel 9, 10, the voice, I thought you were going a little, I'm Ron Burgundy? Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Burgundy. That was strong. Uh, one. Number two, it also made me think of, of David, because David goes, where can I flee yes. from your presence? Yes. Where in the world can I go that you're not? That's right. You're, are you with me in the cave? Yeah. No, I thought I was just at the banqueting table when I'm at church. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now you're saying you're also with me in the club? God, how does this work? Hold up. Yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't, there is therefore, there's no separation. Mm -hmm. That you cannot be separated from the love of God. And I think mm -hmm. the cave is such a picture of that. Tracy, what's some things that stood out to you? Yeah, I think for me too, it was, there was this, now there was this understanding of suffering that, mm. and it, in a way, it drew him closer to his father. Right. Mm. Like, and I, there's something about that, and I know we're not always comfortable talking about suffering and pain um, in the church, and, um, mm. and, and I don't know what the right theology is on it, but I do know that there's something that happens to us personally when we do go through pain and suffering. Right and we find God in the midst of it. We have that moment like yeah. he did in, in the film mm -hmm. and we find ourselves closer to God. Mm. And we, like you said, he's always there. And when, once we have that realization, because we don't for a while, right? right? We find ourselves in pain for a long time. We right. find ourselves banging our head against the cave and the right. wall. It's like, right. what are you doing? Right. We're all, we've all done that. But then once that moment happens where we have that realization, God mm. never left us, he is there. There's this like, amazing community or like communion you have with your father mm. and um and yeah you see other people it's, it, it becomes so much bigger than you thought it was it's it's so much bigger than your pain it's so much bigger than your suffering right. it's, yeah. right. it's about god it's about mm. god's plan for the world it's about god's mm. mission for the world mm. it's like it's about so much more and you are a part of it right there's just mm -hmm. something and that's what i kept seeing is like this intimacy that happened between him and the father wow. after the suffering right. after the pain which to me is who God is. It's like right. your story is actually better on the other side. Yes. Wow. It doesn't it doesn't yes. it doesn't ruin your life. Right. Life's not over. You don't have this past that's gonna loom and right. you're gonna have to live with. But when you have this encounter with God, right. and you have this intimacy with your father mm. and you embrace and I mean he's touching his bloody face and I'm like right. Yeah. Right. gross. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 too much yeah. blood, you know? Yeah. Like it's getting on your clothes, that's all I'm thinking. Like it'd be Church all right. can't be messy. Yeah, Stop it. it. Can't. <laughs> But there's just awesome. a beautiful yeah. picture of God wow. yeah. and, and that my pain is not something to be afraid of or ashamed wow. of, but man, it's, it, the, the best days really are ahead. Mm. And that God and my, my relationship now with God, and now I have this understanding of Jesus on the cross even more and what he mm. did for me. Wow. It just, that's, I couldn't stop thinking about those as right. I was watching right. that bloody thing. Right, yeah. right. No, absolutely. I, I, I know this feels like the section we're talking about the most of scriptures, but I thought of the verse in Luke 4. I know Jesus is quoting from Isaiah, but he's like, I came to set those who are in bondage free. This is the whole reason why I've come. 
I've come to do this. And again, to go back to the, the thought of, wait, I knew that about Jesus, but this now is showing me that this is the Father's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Now I was, uh, Jesus is my homeboy, yeah. you know, like I got the hat and the shirt, but the Father <laughs> is pursuing it? Yeah. Wow, I, 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 I thought that was only a Jesus thing. And so it's demonstrating, once again, an accurate picture of the, the heart of the Father. I think there's another piece of beauty in there when you talk about like how, how the suffering sort of bonds you to him. It's, it's kind of gets to a place to where it's like, okay, how this worked doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not even, mm. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, right? So this, this like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Mm. When I think about like, uh, before I got married, um, you know, you would, you, you just talk to different people about, you know, pursuing this young lady or thinking about marriage. And then you'd have, you'd have one group that says, well, you know, lo- well, you know, love is a choice and it's an act of obedience. And so you, you, you pursue because you know this is the will of the Father and your emotions like Father, but your emotions are going to wane, they're going to come and go. But you know what, you, you obey because this is right. You right. know what I'm saying? And then you have other dudes that was like, man, I don't know. I, I can't tell you why. I just knew. Right, right. I don't know. I was like, I just know I'm not living another day without this lady. I don't know. We we didn't have enough money. We didn't know. I don't know what we was gonna do. All I knew was this was it. Wow. You know. And those dudes are considerably happier, mm. and their marriages are considerably more healthy. Right. So, so I think what what suffering does and what it reveals to the father is some of the stuff we were talking about mm. offline, which is like essentially like. We can get into the scaffolding, we can get into the navel gazing and the mm. guts and the roots and, and the Greek, you know, and parse the Latin. We can get into all that, but at the end of the day, it's like, look, all I know is mm. yesterday I was blind. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? Today I can see. That's it. That's what I know. Right. What I know is I just got pulled out this cave. I don't wow. know how it worked. Wow. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just yeah, know yeah, I'm not yeah. in the cave no more. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? And I think that there's a joy in that. And then as you grow in the relationship, like you can to continue the metaphor, be like, so God, how did that work? <laughs> right, like, right, right, right. Tell me a little more yes. about, but I didn't need none of that. You yes. know what I'm saying? Not Even when I moment. became a Christian. Right. When I became right. a Christian, I didn't understand the cross or right. substitutionary atonement. I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> All I know is yes. I'm in. That's you it. Know what I mean? yeah. That's it. That's powerful. Yeah. Mike, how about you? What are some things? Yeah, that, that scene was the cave scene was really actually very powerful as I, I thought about my own story because um, especially the scene where he is banging his head against the, the stone, because I actually remember um, a season of my life where I'm literally in this hotel room and I throw myself against a wall because I'm so overcome with just self-hatred and shame. Like it had, it had so fester. I'm, I'm admittedly recovering, you know, self-hater and self-loather. Mm. But I, I go like, oh my gosh, this is where, it's like the epitome of despair. It is the epitome of self-hatred. It is mm. like pure hopelessness. Mm. And I just, I just remember like being in that hotel room and just feeling so absolutely broken that the only thing I could think of was actually attack my body and to throw myself against wow. something. Mm. And I, I think there's a, there's a real um, rawness, like this, this humanness that, that when shame is fully blown in our life and our our despair is is just at a thousand percent. It's like we just, out of out of frustration, anger, we just like throw ourselves mm. at yeah. something to hurt ourselves at an even deeper level. Wow. Like we've already done it psychologically, mm. spiritually, mm. emotionally, and then the final choice of like throwing our body against something. Mm. And you know, my my story is a story of like working through those those seasons of shame. I mean, I. I was abused, sexually abused as a child. I was involved in a very horrific uh, boating accident in my teenage years where I actually permanently disfigured somebody. And so we were, again, we talk about our stories and how things that happen early on in our age, our, our, our lives, how that carries through. It's so like, I, again, I, I mentioned earlier, my dad was a great dad, but even my dad's love couldn't overcome right. that those traumas and those that brokenness to where, wow. you know, and if we don't deal with it, mm. like if we if we just let it kind of fester, and we just go, you know, what? the cave's not so bad. It's it's right. not, you know, there's maybe some other people in the cave, and then yeah. we're like, or maybe we begin to feel like we deserve the cave. Yeah. Right. Um, the only outcome of that it, of of shame 
um, unaddressed is literally the attack of every aspect of our identity and who we are. And I think we saw that in that scene. And honestly, the, you, you, you look at suicide, and you look at just the utter desperation of suicide when people take their lives because they are so overcome with just the sense and this belief that life is just better without me here. Um, it is in those moments that we go like, um, we need somebody with a sledgehammer breaking down the wall that wow. we see in that, that yeah. scene. Yeah. Wow. And um, I felt that. I felt like, thank God. Um, yeah. He was sledgehammering through that wall, right? Because I would have just—it just—it doesn't end well. Yeah, and I, I think it, it, it does. It goes back to the helplessness of of sin, the sin that easily in, entangles, mm -hmm. and you're bound. And and we don't want to sometimes ad admit, I'm addicted, I'm broken, I got myself in this thing. I don't, I don't have any, I don't have. I, I can't, how do I get out of this? Yeah. And the, the picture of here comes our rescuer. Yeah. There's a reason why we call him our savior. Yeah. He's saving the day once again. He's fighting through the, the, the strongholds. Yeah. And uh, I just, I thought, well, there it is right there. Mm. I can't liberate myself. I can't fix myself. I've tried to. Yeah. And, and it never happens, does it? Yeah. But here, here he comes. And I think most anybody that's watching the film has to get a sense of peace of going like, man, did I relate in the lagoon? Man, I've been off that cliff. And man, I can totally relate right now because yeah. he keeps rescuing me. Yeah. I thought I'd use all my cards, but why does he keep showing up? He, he's, he's obsessed, isn't he? Yo. He's just and then, relentless. And then the, the nerve to pull out another violin. <laughs> I was like, I, you did not just pull out another <laughs> Right, right. After I just walked this mug off, like, and yeah. I know you handmade the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I squandered that mug. It right. didn't nerve you to, rather than, like, and again, it's the speech. Like, he had yeah. to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here. Dad, I'm so sorry. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Play a violin. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. What? Yeah. What? But I yeah. love that even before there is the beauty of redemption, I felt like it was a good depiction of what the grossness yeah. of sin looks like. Yeah. It, it, it's an old saying, but I do believe that in this showed it. Sin costs you more than you ever want to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes you stay longer than you ever want to stay. Yeah. And there it is, right? Mm -hmm. there, it's, it's bloody, it's gory, it's disgusting, it's destructive to our souls, our relationships. It's like, this is a picture of what sin looks like. Mm -hmm. And the contrast is why it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's because now it's like, I'm back in the light, I'm yeah. back in the, I got the violin. So uh -huh. he, he, he does want to redeem, but I have to be willing. I think so many people, they not only self-sabotage, but they want to just stay. Because mm -hmm. right. it's what you were saying earlier. I've, yeah. I've, I've taken my little blanket of shame. Yeah, yeah. I've got these cuffs, but I've got my initials engraved, so it's all right. And I guess this is it. This is it. Yeah. And I have to, it, it goes back to John 3 for me. Uh, you know, John 3, 16, the most famous scripture in the whole world. But the next verse is so powerful. For, for the light of the world has come into the world, but men, because of their evil deeds, have chosen darkness. Yeah. How many of us have sat in darkness for so long going like, I know he wants to fight for me. I know, I know it's there, but I, I don't, I, I'm not willing to get up. Yeah. You know? That's the beauty of the word help. Um, yeah. When he says help, he's going to get to hear the music yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. And the father's right there with the violin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of uh, John 5 when um, uh, Jesus is with the paralyzed man who had been an invalid for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. And he asks him the question, do you want to get well? Yeah, great question. Right? Yeah. Wow. Do you want to get well? Because Jesus knows that there's a, there is a change that's coming mm -hmm. in terms of our choice. Little like we, we yeah. can stay there. We can stay in the Little cave. Mm -hmm. And we actually know the cave. And we, 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 even though the cave is a horrible place to be, it's like we are comfortable. We know it. It's, we figured it out. We can control it at some level. Yeah. But Jesus says, hey, man, if you want to escape the cave, you just like, do you want to get well? And I think so often in my work with people, this idea of ownership yeah. and responsibility mm. for our lives is so key in terms of our freedom. Mm. If you want to have victory over an addiction, you have to say like, I, I am, 
I am powerless in my addiction, but I have responsibility over my choices. Wow. And that's the way through. And we can't blame somebody. We right. can't say it's their fault or it's like, I'm, I, you know, I can't. I, all those words leave us in sort of this, this victim state where it's like, no, we can move forward and say like, I, yes, I want to get well. Mm. And as soon as we say yes, man, freedom rushes. It's not like yeah. God saying, well, there's a few things you gotta do yeah. and there's a few prices to be paid. It's like, okay, let's do yeah. this. Wow. That's good. Here's your violin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool to see too how like the father in the in the story was like not in any way like moved or affected by the cave. Right. Or the darkness. Yeah, yeah. He's just it's like it's inconsequential to him. Wow. I'm his like my eyes are locked on my yeah. on my wow. son. Like I'm not I'm not grossed out. Right. It's just like it's just like I'm I'm not affected, you know. Wow. And again I think coming from a, a, a position of like when you when your environment is plays such a big role in the choices mm. you make, you know what I'm saying? Like so for again, speaking for like all my hood folks, you know what I'm saying? Like oftentimes it, you know, with no 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 cop out or anything like that, it's like you you feel like this is what you do to survive. This yep. is just what mm -hmm. life is. Yep. yep. It's ugly, it is what it is. I'm gonna do my best in this situation. You know what I'm saying? And maybe every once in a while, you guys will send your little youth group down here to paint some schools. Wow. I don't know. Wow. The point is, you ain't gonna stay down here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you, maybe right. you'll build your little hipster church around the corner. You feel me? <laughs> right? And bring your, and all your little hipsters from the valley will come down here and you're gonna call that a neighborhood church. But you ain't like, it's a project right behind you. Ain't nobody right. in the projects here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, there's, a, there's an element of it that kind of feels like, well, you're not gonna stick around. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's gross here, mm. you know what I'm saying? But God, in his infinite love and care and complete control of our environment, walks right in and is not at all affected. Mm. Not Either way, not like, I can't believe you lived like this, or like, oh, this is gross. We just, just came to get my boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's right. And, and there's, there's profound backstory that's going on that we don't always see the first time we see the film. And that is that there are other folk in, mm -hmm. in this cave. Mm. And I, in my pain, probably don't see them. Mm. Um, mm. Sometimes I do, sometimes I could gain comfort from them, but most of the time I'm so hurting, I'm so much in suffering that it's just me. And uh. I'm back to believing that I am uh, uniquely failed, it's mm. just me. But the father is coming in, and he knows who's in there, mm -hmm. and he's going after, like someone was saying before, going after the, the ninety-nine. He's going after this one sheep this time, right. and he gets it out, gets him out, and when he comes out, his goal is not just our healing; it's also that we would learn to be so filled with his love that we get to love others in a way we never had before. Mm -hmm. And so I always imagine when the father is going back in for another round business as usual, he's always going back in, mm. that he's maybe saying to me, hey, you want to come come with me this time? Mm. Right. And we'll get a couple out of here. Right. But I'm wow. going to teach you my, my heart mm. um, for never giving up, always pursuing. Wow. wow. And so come with me, and we'll get some more. It's amazing. It's amazing. I don't. I don't oh. know what to say. That was so powerful, <laughs> profound. Oh. Because I do. I. I. I want to just kind of stay here for a moment. And um, why would you say, Bruce? What are some main reasons why, besides my self-loathing, what are some other main reasons why I'm not as empathetic? Why don't I sympathize? Why don't I? Why don't I acknowledge? Um, is there any other? reasons that you can give us that you'd say, you know, I would, I would look out for this and not become a person that's just so into yourself. How do I, how do I help other people? Uh, a while back you were talking about, it's, it's about receiving. Mm. And we, we love because he first loved us. Wow. Mm. But when we're not crying for help or when we're not trusting, we're not going to be experiencing the Father's love. Mm. And so when we're not experiencing mm. the Father's love, we're not going to give out That's right. mm -hmm. love. That's one of the purposes of being loved, of trusting mm. Him, so that we can be loved 
and, and start on a journey of being healthy enough that we could reach out a little and love ourselves. Wow. But to me, that's a profound wow. trusting moment Wow. Um, that he has in the cave. Right. He, he's on the beginning of a journey that he can't even imagine. Right, man. Mm -hmm.